Hi, we present our paper Shape and Viewpoint Without Key Points. This is joint work with Anju Kanazawa and Jitendra Malik at UC Berkeley. In this work, our goal is to use an image collection without any ground truth 3D supervision for learning a 3D morphable model of a shape for a particular category. From a single input image, we also want to reconstruct shape, viewpoint, and texture. There are a number of previous approaches that tackle the same problem of learning a morphable shape model without ground truth 3D supervision, but they use key point and other supervision. Our goal in this paper is to get rid of key points. We still need images, silhouettes, and a single template shape for the entire category. Key points are useful because they ground viewpoints. Structure from motion techniques run over key points on the entire dataset, give cameras that have been used as supervision by previous works. Without key points, we don't have cameras for the supervision that previous works relied on. When trained without camera supervision, previous approaches tend to predict shapes that look reasonable from one camera viewpoint as shown here. However, an alternate view reveals that the shape is actually flat and degenerate. In this paper, we propose an approach that gets around this problem. Instead of having the network predict the camera, we optimize it. Since the camera pose optimization landscape has a lot of local minima, we jointly optimize over a set of K camera hypotheses we call this set of K cameras a camera multiplex. For each instance in the training set, we store a separate camera multiplex. Similar to prior work, the camera is weak perspective. Before training, we use the template shape and the silhouette to initialize the K cameras in the camera multiplex to views that explain the silhouette when rendered. We do so by optimizing the cameras to minimize a silhouette loss when rendering the template shape. We now explain how to use the camera multiplex in our approach. Similar to previous work, from a single RGB image input, we predict shape as a deformation to the vertices of a learnt mean mesh and texture as a UV texture image to be wrapped around the mesh. We fetch the camera multiplex corresponding to this instance and render the predicted shape and texture from each viewpoint in the multiplex to get K rendered images. Supervising each of these rendered images leads to per camera losses, against which the camera multiplex is updated. The per camera losses also induce a probability distribution over the cameras. Intuitively, a camera with a smaller loss is more probable and vice versa. The shape and texture predictor F is then updated against the expected loss over all cameras, coupled with some regularization. The per camera loss is the summation of a texture loss and a mask loss between the rendered and ground truth textures and silhouettes respectively. The cameras in the multiplex are updated to minimize this per camera loss. The total loss used for updating the shape and texture predictor is the expected camera loss with some shape regularization priors. Therefore, note that the camera multiplex and the network parameters are updated using gradients from slightly different loss objectives. After training the shape and texture predictor to convergence while optimizing the camera multiplex, we identify the most probable camera from each camera multiplex as pseudo ground truth pi star and use that for training a feed forward camera predictor. Finally, at test time, we can put these predictors together to predict shape, texture, and viewpoint from a single image. Now some results. We visualize the distribution of camera poses on the test set of the birds Cub dataset as a scatter plot of azimuth on the x axis and elevation on the y axis. Notice how the CMR supervised approach 
which uses key points, obtains a camera post distribution that is very similar to the ground truth. When the same approach is trained without key points, camera post prediction collapses and we get degenerate flat shapes. Another approach, CSM, that also predicts camera poses without key point supervision, collapses to multiple modes despite using losses to explicitly prevent a single mode collapse. Our approach, UCMR, on the other hand, learns to predict an almost uniform camera pose distribution that's similar to the ground truth. UCMR camera pose predictions do not collapse to a few modes and are qualitatively better distributions than CSM and CMR without key points. We can quantitatively evaluate the performance by using the geodesic distance between predicted and ground truth rotations as our metric. Here, UCMR obtains an error that's at least 15 degrees better than the baselines with the same supervision. This plot also shows that texture is critical to finding good camera poses as silhouettes alone cannot disambiguate certain camera poses. UCMR trained without texture performs poorly, achieving an error that's 15% higher. We now show qualitative results on the cub birds dataset. We learn to predict reasonable shape and texture for a wide variety of birds with different shapes and textures. UCMR also scales to multiple categories. On the Pascal 3D motorcycles, we can learn shapes for both dirt bikes with prominent front tires as well as scooters with a concavity in the front. Qualitative results on Pascal 3D cars show that we can reconstruct various kinds of cars. From yellow race cars to orange sports cars to red and grey regular everyday vehicles. We also present qualitative results on a new dataset of shoes that we scraped from the internet for which key point annotations aren't available. We show that UCMR learns to reconstruct shoes of different shapes and sizes from different viewpoint input images. Viewpoint. For each category, we visualize the space of learnt deformations by sampling in a PCA model fit on the predicted shapes over the entire training dataset. Observe that our deformation space captures variation in head and tail sizes of the bird, length and wheel prominence for the car, fuel tank size and seat shape for the motorcycle, and sleekness and height of the shoes. Here we compare the input template shape which was used to initialize the learnable mean mesh and the final learnt mean mesh side by side. We see that the bird develops a thinner and longer tail in the final mean mesh. The motorcycle's front tire becomes more prominent. The shoe becomes slightly sleeker and longer. The back of the car reduces in size. Here we visualize the space of predicted textures by fitting a PCA model on all textures predicted on the train set. For ease of visualization, we visualize six PCA axes of variation rendered on the final learnt mean mesh. Observe that our network learns to predict diverse texture and learns interesting modes of variation for neck, head, eyes, beak, belly, wings, and back of the bird. Please check out our website and come visit our Zoom poster to find out more. Thank you.